you've been hearing from you this morning about full Vestrant, this has got a bit of a history to it because it's actually a very potent drug. It was as good as tamoxifen in, in, in the treating breast cancer. Can you give me that backstory first? Because I want to ask you about your new studies. Yeah. It was initially introduced at a dose of 250 milligrams and was shown in the second line setting to be equivalent to an astrazole and in the first line setting to be similar to tamoxifen. Um, but subsequent to that, the dose was increased to 500 milligrams. And this is, there's been a study of the second line setting of 500 milligrams. It was called the confirmed study. And that showed that compared to 250 milligrams, the new dose, 500, gave a time to progression advantage, treatment on, uh, on the disease. But that also translated into a survival advantage. Now, f first of all, why was it not eagerly taken up at 250? Because it was as good as an astrazole and tamoxifen. I think it was as good as, similar to the other drugs, but no, no better than. And, therefore, and it was more expensive because it was a new drug. And therefore, it tended to be used subsequent to the other drugs, as against the 500 milligram dose, as I say, which for confirm was better than its comparator. So what have you done now? The first study shows that the Fulvestrin 500 dose is better than the standard arm, um, which is the third generation aromatase inhibitor, anastrozole. And it's better in terms of improved survival. It shows its unique mode of action. And also the 500 milligram dose gives you greater control of that pathway, the estrogen receptor. Now, in, in broad figures, could you put some numbers on the survival benefit and, and how much superior it is yeah. to the alternatives? 30% of women are alive, more women are alive at the end of the study period in the fulvestrant group than in the anastrozole group. That means that the overall survival is significantly longer. The median survival is 54 months as against the anastrozole arm, which is five and a half months shorter. So this is a significant advance. And to give that some context to, all of these subgroups, whether it was age, site of disease, prior systemic therapy, all of the subgroups show the same benefit. Um, and to put that in a wider context of where we are today, you know, when I started uh, looking after women with metastatic breast cancer 20, 30 years ago, the average survival was 24 months. We are now reporting 54 months. And so this is a new step up in that whole process of, we've seen over the last 20 years of improving the survival and the outcome of women uh, with metastatic breast cancer. As I said, we see 30% less deaths during the study period on the new drug. And um, <clears throat> so what do you think clinically this could imply for doctors right now? Well, I think that you have to see it in a wider context again, which is, as I said before, the confirmed data shows a time to progression and a survival difference in terms of second line. Fulvestrin 500 is the only drug I know that has shown a benefit in both second and first line therapy for TTP and survival. Having said that, I think that the uh, study is still a, a phase two trial. It's not a phase three trial, which most people would want to see before they say it's completely practice changing. And so I think there's a difference here between, say, funders and what an individual doctor and a physician might decide. If you're a funder and you're paying tax dollars or tax pounds, you would want to be sure that you're spending that health money on something that is definitely shown to be more beneficial. And I think funders will understandably wait to see the phase three trial. And there is a phase three trial that's been performed and we're waiting for the results. And we can talk about that in, in a moment. But I think that's what the funders will do correctly. I think that individual doctors and physicians may have a discussion and somebody may say, well, I can, I can afford to, to pay for this and I want to have something like this. And, and they may make a different decision individually based on what their own, in, their own circumstances are. Right, now the size of the study and the mm -hmm. level of the statistical significance, mm -hmm. what are they? And just the broad figures for overall survival and time to progression? Yeah, the, um, the, the current study is a phase two, 200 patient study. And what it shows is the hazard ratio is 0.7. So it's a 30% reduction in deaths in the full vestment treated arm. And now, as I say, it's 54 months um, that you have uh, in the full vestment arm. Uh, in the phase three trial, which is called the Falcon trial, that's going to be, a, it is a 450 patient study, so much larger, powered uh, more. And that has 
finished recruitment, so the study's done in that sense. What we're now waiting to see is the events happen so that we can report on, on that. Do you have a provisional recommendation to make to doctors then at this point? I think that from standard of care position, I think that still remains an aromatase inhibitor. As I say, I think individual doctors and physicians will look at the data and make their own decision um, based on what that situation is. For example, somebody who um, maybe f uh, have Alzheimer's or forgetfulness and doesn't take tablets well, the doctor may say, well, I, I'm going to, in this individual case, no useful vestment 500. But I think it's the standard of care. I think that still is the AI, still the non-steroidal AI. But individual doctors will talk to the patients and, and come to individual decisions, I think. And this is an injection? This is an injection. So is, does that count against it, do you think, in the routine use? No, I don't think it does, because I think the one thing here is that you know you get compliance. And that's what I was talking about, for example, in a situation with somebody who might have Alzheimer's, you can be sure you're getting compliance. And so I think that there are advantages to that. So a quick bottom line message for doctors is what? I think that we've se we've, we have seen with this study that the AIs can be beaten in terms of the effect and the control of cancer, uh, breast cancer in the metastatic setting. I think that's the first thing. And I think that the second message to doctors is that as a standard of care, we are still waiting for the phase three trials to come through, but that they will make their own decision based on what you know the patient, the particular individual patient they have, and you know the uh, the, the data that they've used.